Okay, hey everybody, thanks for checking out this video. This is going to be another video in a series now on the 6-7 double calendars. And if you're an experienced double calendar backtester or trader, this may not be super helpful for you, but we have gotten a good amount of feedback in a short amount of time on some of these videos that we've put out and just wanted to kind of take a step back and talk through the trade structure a little bit and why the backtest is set up the way it is. A reminder, this is a back test all the way back from 2022 when Option Omega launched. And quickly it became popular on the platform to back test double calendars. So, double calendars, a put calendar, and a call calendar typically. Although you could do it with the same type, people usually do a put calendar and a call calendar. So, you're selling a nearer term, buying a longer term. And with the advent of zero day options on SPX every single day, there are the opportunity to do a lot more of these. So some of the trade structures that are common are two fours, one threes, two threes, two fives, five sevens, six sevens. There's even some longer medium term strategies as well, but there's a lot of X seven and under DTE calendars. So we're just going to kind of step through this. And again, Feel free if if you're an experienced trader to skip ahead to the end or skip this video, but we got uh, a few questions that were really good and really insightful questions and we're going to talk through them. So the first thing we'll do is kind of explain our mindset. So you're entering at the end of the day on Friday. And one of the things that we can do is play around with the ending time. So something that I like to do is I like to try different time periods around the same time. I'm trying to anti-curve fit the back test. So this has a 12 and a half mar entering at 355. If we enter at 347, the mar goes up even higher. And let's do this. We're going to get a couple back tests kind of run. So we have baselines to compare them to. So we'll use this 355 as our baseline. And then we can test and compare it and kind of do some analysis. You can easily do a couple back tests and then look at them in the recent test runs. And just a reminder, we're using the normal allocation and portfolio uncapped contracts. If you look at this, this, this actually is pretty helpful. When you, when you look at them, it looks like there's, there's one, one test that's different. So that's, that's actually pretty helpful to know. You've got a hundred tests. So your, your win rate is about the same. You're winning 69%, nice. And 70%, also nice. So your win rate's pretty similar. Your capture rate is rounded to 17 and rounded to 18. So pretty similar. Basically, you've got one test that's different. So this is helpful information because one of the things that's good is it's just kind of affirming the thesis that there probably is something here worth refining. So we'll move it up a couple more minutes. Now, at the end of the day, I typically try to avoid doing back tests at 350 because at 350, the back tester may be picking up data from the MOC, which happens at 350. Some people avoid 355 as well. So this is, again, this is really helpful. This, I'm going to do one other thing. I'm going to take off exact strike offset here. This is, uh, again, we have a 70% win rate, right around a 17% capture rate, similar MAR. So we're getting similar consistency results. What I just did then was I unchecked the use exact stripe offset. So that's going to allow us to pick up uh, a couple more trades and stick with 101 trades every single time. So we can kind of see the difference, but again, they're all really helpful. So th this is, this is good to know. You can, you can test it even much earlier in the day. If you wanted to test it at, at noon or 1230 or one o'clock, you could test it before power hour. So 245 would be another one. But again, I'm looking at the consistency of the win rate, the consistency of the capture rate and saying, yeah, this structure is a pretty good structure after having, as we point out in the prior video, pretty long period of not doing great. So a little bit earlier, a little bit before power hour, again, really similar capture rate, the win percentage pretty close. It dipped a little bit, but this gives us an idea. We can go back to the main one that we did. So we'll go back to the 355 option here. This is kind of our baseline. And 
we've got a, a, a good baseline to work with. Something else that I, I look at is consistency across years. If you look at it, and again, this is going to be weighted by the returns over time, but you can look at it and see that it's done really well every year. And the CAGR and the drawdown, which give you the MAR, those are going to be a function of your allocation. So one way to think about it is if you weren't really trading this much, let's say you had a $40,000 account and you only wanted to trade 5% of it. Well, that's just fine. You can adjust those two choices in the back tester and set up a back test for a little bit smaller allocation. It's just going to change the output metrics, obviously. Your capture rate and your win percentage should, should still be there, but your, your CAGR, your max drawdown, and therefore your MAR are going to be indicative of the changes that you made. So we're going to stick with that baseline that we just had, which was the 355 at 5% on a 40. Did we start with 40,000? We're going to stick with the baseline that we had. Let me find it. Okay, we're going to stick with the baseline that we had. We'll go back to the 355, 10% on 50K. And I think this is the one that we started with. So that kind of talks us through the entry. The exits, there's a couple interesting things you can do. So right now we've got a upside profit target, which is pretty, it's, it's pretty high, 50%. Rem remember, this is a debit trade. So if you bought it for 10 bucks, you'd get out at 15. Or in the case of a calendar, if you bought it at five, you'd get out at seven and a half. So let's do, let's do one thing here and see if this makes it better. I don't know if it's going to make it better or not. But one of the things you can do is you can do partial profits. So we've got the back tester here. We're going to go to add profit action. So we're going to set, let's try this. Let's see if we can get any higher than 50%. So let's say, let's kick this up at 65, but we know it gets to 50% a lot. So at 50%, we're going to close half of it. And let's see if this makes it better or worse. I'm not going to add a stop loss adjustment at this point. Stop loss adjustments are helpful, but what we're doing is seeing how far we can let this thing run. So right now, again, 70%. Okay, it didn't, it didn't really, whoops, I messed that up. So I don't want to close 100%. I want to only close 50%. Sometimes I edit out the mess ups, but it's also helpful to see that we make mistakes too. So I might leave that one in. Okay, that actually, that's interesting. That made it a tiny little bit better. And interesting. So the, the MAR got a little bit better. I wonder if we take that, that 50% profit target off entirely, is that going to make it better yet still? It did. It, did. it increased it even better. So you've got a little bit higher MAR. Your CAGR is just going up. And this is the way that I think about this kind of refinement is that this is helpful. Because I'm looking at it going, okay, I can have different profit targets and it's going to hit different profit targets. It shows you that there's times when this thing can run quite a bit. While we're on the subject of profit targets, let's look, I'm going to look through the trade log and see if I can find one here. Perfect. Here we go. This is just a random example. Now, when you look at the trade replay in the back test results screen, you can see times like this so 940 open so this was this was the start of a day so that's why there's a big move if you look right here this is in the middle of the day what what is this why did the trade go from 580 to 670 well that is is that's an errant spike due to illiquidity remember we're measuring the data so frequently in a trade like a double calendar you have sometimes erratic price movements now it's not common. It's actually, if you look at the number of minutes the trade is on and how many of these are, you could say they're very uncommon. But what you want to do when you're back testing a double calendar is you want to account for that. And so what we have in the algorithm is a option under the miscellaneous option section, which is a punisher, which is require two hits at profit target. What that's going to do is make sure that the profit target was hit 
two minutes in a row. So again, require two hits of profit target is pretty helpful. You want to use that when you're back testing a double calendar. Something else that we can look at is just to look at kind of the robustness and, and the flexibility of the back test is we can look at changing the exit time. We've already played with changing the entry time. So in this case, one of the things we could do is we're still entering at the end of the day. We can look at exiting maybe later in the day. So let's do something kind of extreme. We'll do 205. So this will be after news. And that's going to give even more time for the short to burn off. So this is exiting the day of the short, which is Thursday. We're just exiting later in the day at 205. And as you can see, actually made the back test worse. And again, when I look at it, when we were doing the changes in the entry minute, we were still very close on the win percentage and the capture rate. When we change the exit time of the trade, that made a pretty big difference. So in this case, it made it worse. So the way that this back test is set up, and we can, again, validate this, we could try a different time. So this is just 132, just a random time. Let's see, is it closer to the 230 exit or the 10 exit? Yeah, it's even worse. Now, in general, a lot of people would still be pretty happy with this performance curve. Overall, we got a little bit better exit on this back test exiting earlier in the day. We can try it. So some people want to exit a little bit before news drops at 10. We could try 958 and let's see how close that gives us. See, this is very similar. So we're back up to our 69% win rate, our 16% capture rate. So that just helps us test the kind of rigor of the trade by looking at entry times. I often take the approach of testing them sometimes the minutes around a news change. And some people back test based on specific news events. What I find helpful is since we back tested it around 10 o'clock and then later in the afternoon for this, again, the capture rate and the win percentage kind of tell the story that it was pretty similar. So that is a little bit about the exits. Now in the last video, we looked at some different exit when tested conditions, and we'll probably revisit that in the future with some Delta exits, but we're not going to do that in this video. Last thing I'm going to talk about is I'm just going to come back around to the Punisher. Again, the Punisher is our friend. He punishes your back test. You want your back test to be punished. You want to spend some time in this section. So just again, to talk it through, we've got the commissions and fees, which are standard. So you can change those to your broker. $1.25 is kind of an industry standard that a lot of people use and people pay similar to that on some platforms. The other thing we've got is entry slippage and exit slippage. And you can find a lot of discussion on this, but after many, 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 many back tests and several years of doing this, a lot of people use five cents for entry and exit on a six, seven. So can be higher, can be lower, but the feedback that we've gotten is that five cents is, is a good starting point. So the other things we have on here, is ignore trades with wide bid ask. If there is a very wide spread between the bigger bid or ask, you can flag that and ignore that. And that will show up in the back test. And it's not, in this type of trade, it's not very common. It does happen occasionally. Here's one. So there was one right here on the morning of September 21st. So there was one there. And it does not look like I think we had any others. On these type of back tests, they're not going to be super common. So we have that on there. We have two hits on PT, which we already explained. Cap opening profits is just in the back test simulation. You can essentially act as a limit order. So we are using one minute data. So if you do not have that on, it will give you the mid at whatever the minute is when the profit target is hit. So most people are not trading that way. They're putting a target in for a limit order. So that's what cap non-opening profit target does. So most people use these in conjunction. And the only other thing we've gotten here is we have some blackout days and we only have two. We could actually probably put more. There's been a great discussion, actually several discussions. A lot of digital ink has been spilled on the merits of skipping holidays during double calendars. And there's been uh, some of the community members have done some pretty extensive research and had some pretty robust discussions on what type of back tests benefit from skipping 
via blackout days. So right now, this is pretty simple. We only have two in here, but that will kind of give you this back test. Like I said, it's been around for a while and a couple different iterations that gives you a little more perspective on the setup of it and why it is the way it is. So thanks for watching the video. As always, we appreciate it.